Functions are a great time-saving option for calculating data in your spreadsheet. They can be used in place of formulas when a formula would be too long or just too complicated to write out manually. Many functions in Google Sheets are geared more towards advanced users, and it can be tricky figuring out how and when to use them. But other functions are easy to use and can save you a lot of time. So in this video, we'll start with some basic information, a few simple functions, as well as what you need to know about entering them correctly. In this example, I'd like to add these cells to calculate the total. If I tried to create a formula for that, I'd have to add each cell individually. Not only would that be tedious, it would also make the formula really long, especially if I had, say, 100 cells that I wanted to add. So instead of creating a formula, I'm going to use a function. First, I'll select the cells and click the functions command. If you don't see the functions command, click the three dots here to see the rest of the commands. A drop down menu will appear containing a list of functions. Here you can find the average or count the number of cells in a selection. I'm going to use the sum function to add all of the cells and find the total. When you're done, press enter on your keyboard and the answer will appear. Let's look at this function in a little more detail. Just like formulas, functions always start with an equal sign, but you may have noticed that there are no mathematical operators, such as addition or subtraction, like you would normally see in a formula. Instead, functions use a specific syntax that includes the name of the function, followed by one or more arguments in parentheses. The arguments tell the function which cells or numbers to use when calculating the result. In this example, we only have one argument, even though there are two different cell references. This is called a range of cells, or a cell range. A cell range is represented by two different cell references with a colon in between. In this case, the range consists of all the cells from D3 through D12. If you want to use more than one argument, you'll need to separate each one with a comma. Let's try another function now that has a different syntax. In this example, there's a column for the date each item was ordered and the date each item was received. I want to find out how many business days it took for each order to arrive. I can use the net workdays function to find out how long it took for each delivery. Go back to the functions command. Here you can choose a category in this case, date, to narrow down the choices. You can hover over each function to see a brief description of what action it performs. Just click a function to insert it. You can click the question mark next to the cell to see more detailed information, although this information may appear by default. In this case, we need two arguments, a start date and an end date. Now I'll just select the start date and the end date, make sure to separate them with a comma, and make sure it has a closing parenthesis. Remember that in order for the function to work, the syntax must be exact. If you enter a function incorrectly, you can click the cell, and a window will appear telling you what the function needs. Also, just like with formulas, you can copy the function to other cells by using the fill handle. And now we can see the number of days it took for each item to be delivered. If functions are new to you, the syntax for some may look complicated and strange. If you are unsure of when or how to use a particular function, it's probably a good idea to skip it. However, if you're familiar with more common actions like sum or average, look closely at the syntax and give functions a try. They might just be easier than you thought. GCF Global, creating opportunities for a better life.